Michael Hernandez here of the 10 Second Mark, and I'm here today with a very special guest, a teammate of mine, somebody that I get the privilege of sharing the mats with day in, day out, who's going to be making their MMA debut on October 28th at Bakersfield Combat. Alexander, or as a lot of his teammates know him, Xander Ines. How's it going today, man? It's going good. Just got done with first practice, so just resting now. So for you, I know that this has been a long journey. You have been preparing for this what seems like years, right? Give us through the start. How did you originally meet Antonio Benuelos over there at Pit Fit? How did you get involved with the Pit team in general? Because it's obviously a, a, a pretty successful operation over there. Yeah, so it's kind of a long story. So then I rolled in there, started going like twice a week, and then it escalated three times a week, four times a week. And then for the last two years, it's pretty much just been like a hobby I've been pretty committed to. And then at the beginning of this year, I told uh, Antonio, that like, hey, I want to try fighting. And then it's just kind of been a grind this whole entire year to get ready for that. You came over from a pretty, a pretty fight-heavy area over there in Stockton, California. How was it to come from an area that obviously had the likes of Nate Diaz and Nick Diaz coming out of there and obviously all the whole entire scrap pack nearby over there in the Bay Area? But how was it growing up over there in Stockton? Obviously a pretty crazy area to kind of grow up and uh, kind of grow your adolescence into, right? Yeah, it's... It's definitely interesting. I mean, a lot of people like to talk about how, like, gnarly Stockton is. There's good parts and there's bad parts. I was fortunate enough to grow up in, like, more of the good parts. But, I mean, ever since, like, early high school is kind of when Nate Diaz started to gain all that, like, extra fame when he was fighting Connor and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty common for people to be UFC fans and all that kind of fight culture is a little bit pretty big there. Would you say that, was there any point in your time in like high school or anything like that where you were like, wow, I really want to try and maybe try this out one day. Maybe this will be my kind of career. Or was it just for you, you were focused on other things. Um, maybe was there another sport that you were perhaps involved in throughout your adolescence? Uh, give us through the rundown, man. So for like, I mean, when I was really, really young, I did a little bit of like martial arts, just kind of like the kids kind of stuff. But like throughout high school, no, like. It never really, like I used to, I would watch UFC every once in a while, but it was never really like on my mind. I grew up riding motocross and like snow skiing and wakeboarding and stuff like that. And just kind of having a good time with all that stuff and not taking it super seriously. And it really wasn't until like probably a year ago when I really started thinking about like, maybe I could like try and fight and see where it goes. And then officially this year it was just like, dude, I mean, I've been thinking about it for so long. I might as well try it. Was there maybe a moment that kind of stuck out to you that was like, yeah, I got I to gotta do this thing, man. Like this is like how you were saying, it's already been on your mind so much. It's everything's kind of been carrying into it. Was there just one particular moment that you were like, wow, I, I got to get in that cage? Um, just kind of, well, there's a few things, right? Like um, my good friend, Eddie, he's fought a few times. And he kind of was just like, I mean, you've been thinking about it for so long. You might as well try <laughs> it. Like if you've been pondering back and forth. And then just also, like, knowing the team that I could be a part of, right, like being a part of the pit, who has a legendary background, getting to train with guys like John Hackleman, Antonio Benuelos, uh, Cody Gibson, all those kind of guys. It's like, if I'm going to do it, I have, like, the perfect team to, like, know that as, like, I'm getting all the right things done. So it was just between those two things, it was just like, yeah, well, let's do this. Like, I know I have a good team behind me. Let's, let's just do it. How is that relationship between you and Coach Benuelos? I know you guys share a pretty unique relationship, especially because, like how you said, you were one of those guys that came up to him and were like, hey, I want to fight, and stuck through with it. Oftentimes there's a lot of guys that come into gyms and they say they want to fight, but, you know, they get through a week, they get through maybe a month, and they're kind of, uh, but you stuck through this for quite a long time, two years, helping Eddie kind of progress through his MMA career as well. You were a sparring partner for him. So what was there, was there like ever a moment where you and Ben Lola's kind of seen eye to eye and were like, yeah, like you, you got to try this out.
was um, one of Man Bun's fights because he was fighting a southpaw and they didn't have any natural southpaws. And Eddie kind of was like, hey, like, you know, <laughs> Xander's a southpaw. Maybe we can bring him in. And so, like, through that, I got to, like, show up to a couple of Saturday practices and then kind of just, I guess, uh, in a way, like, put in my time. And, like, I didn't just show up with no experience and everything and just be like, hey, I want to fight. It was, like, a long, prog- progressive, like, series of just like picking up more days picking up more time and then eventually like being like hey i want to try this and at that point me and antonio had a pretty good relationship and he knew i was serious about it so i got pretty lucky in that sense yeah it definitely uh it was it was like it was like destiny aligned itself you know everything kind of trickled its own way into you eventually becoming uh kind of one of those guys that Antonio can go to and be like, hey, we need you for your training camp. Hey, we need you for this. But give us a little bit of insight on that. Obviously, this is one of the camps that's kind of it's tucked away from everywhere else. You know, there's not really a whole big MMA market like how there used to be back in the day. So I feel oftentimes a lot of the guys over here, like how you're saying, Cody Gibson's, the man buns, a lot of the guys that train over here, there's not a ton of coverage on it. How is it to get to get trained with those guys that have gone to the championship level, have obviously seen the UFC? likes the likes of cody gibson well i mean it's it kind of goes back to that like idea of like if i'm gonna do it i want to know that i'm doing it the right way and just the amount of the guys that we have and the amount of success that we have it's like uh i guess we would say it's like mma in slow is just not it's not dead we're just kind of having a rebirth right now we have guys like jackson henson in the gym who's a savage and like uh we get to train with guys like sammy henson who's olympic silver medalist in wrestling so it's just all the guys around me it's just like you know they know how to win and you know they've seen the highest of levels so it's like all that does is just breed confidence in that if i go out there and do what they've taught me to do and do what they say then there should be no reason to lose for this fight upcoming on the of different than training just uh like how you were saying habitually yeah it's i mean the diet's a little bit different you like i would like to think that i was pretty healthy (laughs) back but like before getting into camp but then you realize like how much stuff that you would eat on the side and like that wasn't necessarily good but so far i mean it's been great it's what one thing that i just like really have kept going back to in my head is that it's just been a slow progression of like taking the next step so it's not like I went from like nothing to like full-on fight camp it's just like been slowly working up towards this so overall it feels good I mean I'm obviously putting in the extra work but it's a lot of the thinking I don't have to do because of the system that's in place with me with coaches like Antonio and John Hackleman and then having guys like Man Bun, Jackson and Eddie who've all done this before and they can give me all the advice i really need so it takes a lot of the doubt and the question out of it when i can just rely on those guys how was it get, again to get some training in uh were you able to participate i seen antonio had some posts recently glover Teixeira actually came over to the central coast he got a couple of uh guys ready for their black belt training over there with uh hackleman i believe how was how was that to get to go with to go with somebody that's obviously a light heavyweight great but somebody that has kind of like how you were saying shown that this plan does work on the highest of levels and has obviously made john hackleman a very happy man in the past yeah so it was pretty cool i've gotten to uh meet glover and train with him a couple times the first time was kind of funny because he never like nobody knew he was coming and i just walked into the wrestling room and went oh that's that's glover to share and i said that out loud and he just looked over and was like oh oops like (laughs) But, it, I mean, it's really cool. It's, like, it keeps going back to that, like, giving me confidence thing and knowing that, like, this system does work and we have guys who win. And that's, like, the biggest thing to me is I want to be a part of the team that's going to be winning. And just having the tight-knit group that we have, it's just nothing but builds confidence. And uh, you guys often kind of affiliate yourselves with, sometimes you guys will affiliate yourselves with some other gyms, a gym that you guys do affiliate yourselves with and have got some training with in the past, Tri-City MMA over there in Kalinga. You guys got a teammate over there who's going to be fighting over there in December in Visalia, Enoch Mokotrell, and then as well as Jose Aguniga. He just got announced to be competing in a championship fight. How is it like to be not only associating yourself 
with people in the gym like every single day that are succeeding but also when you're going and you're training with these outside gyms because to have these outside gyms having just as much success if not you know right on that equal level it, it's pretty cool to see you guys both succeeding yeah i've uh, i've gotten to work with enoch a little bit he's the most solid guy i love working with him Obviously, there was a little mistake at the last fight, <laughs> but hey, we're gonna he's gonna get this one done on December 23rd. He's fighting, I believe, right? Yes, and it's just great. It's great to have different bodies and different guys come through the gym, especially guys like Enoch who like are just as dedicated and want to win and have that same mindset of just always getting better, always improving. And just it's great to have guys like that around. What are some things that you po possibly have to say for your opponent going into October 28th? I know that this is something that you've been preparing for for a long time. I know you're not somebody that likes to talk a whole lot. You like to let the let the work do the applying. But, I mean, is there any kind of message that you have for whoever is going into that cage across from you? Uh, I mean, I guess not really. I just am excited. It's going to be fun. I'm excited to throw down with somebody and just kind of, like, test myself and see how it goes. But it's kind of funny. Well, there's not a lot of information on either of us because it's both <laughs> our debuts, so there's not a whole lot to really know about the guy. But, I mean, I just hope everything's going well for him, too, and we can just put on a show and have some fun. We all know, you know, you're a very humble guy. You like to keep everything very calm. So I'm super excited, though, to see what comes of everything, what comes of this MMA journey on October 28th. Do you have a timetable, though? I know, obviously, first fight, you want to kind of let everything play out. Is there going to be a next one after this? Are you going to continue that progression? I know Eddie kind of is waning off from his MMA career, looking to actually get into the police force. Were you possibly going to be uh, looking to continue this MMA career? Yeah, my goal right now is just to kind of ride it till the wheels fall off is, is where I'm at right now. Obviously, it's easy to say without having one fight. But, I mean, the goal right now is to get through this one and come out healthy, come out with the win, and then just start clicking some off. Any uh, potential ideas on what the nickname is going to be for the fight? Are you going to let the mustache just go and that's going to be your thing? Or what, what's going to be the nickname for uh, Alexander Zant? Is it going to be Xander? What, what, what are you going to work with, man? Um, well, definitely the mustache is going to be cleaned up and ready to go for fight night for sure. I got that planned out next week. And then um, I don't know. I don't really have a nickname. Obviously, all my friends call me Xander. I'm going to walk out to Alexander. But um one fun nickname I have is from Marvin, who's on the team. He calls me the orangutan because he says I walk like an orangutan. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to roll with that, but Antonio was like, veto that. We're not doing that one. That may be a little offensive to some groups especially. <laughs> yeah. So the orangutan wouldn't, wouldn't, be the, uh, wouldn't, be the best, uh, wouldn't be the best nickname. But, hey, you know, it definitely is an odd to your uh, teammate. Maybe you can work in, like, you know, uh, there's a UFC fighter, and I'm forgetting his name at the moment, but – um, he, he's nicknamed the monkey, you know, and like kind of like Coach Frazier's nicknamed the monkey, you know, maybe we can do a little bit of a derivative off of that, you know, but was there any, anybody else that you wanted to thank? Obviously, a whole lot goes into the fight process. Uh, obviously, like how you're saying, time with Antonio working on pads, time with Frazier working the grappling, time with Hackleman going over there to Arroyo Grande, and just in general, family it takes a lot of sacrifice for a fight. Anybody that you wanted to thank in particular? Pretty much just my whole entire support uh, system I owe thanks to, and then just all the guys at the gym, like you mentioned, like Frazier, Antonio, Eddie, Manbun, all the guys on the team, Marvin, Cody, like we couldn't do it really without any of them because obviously it takes a full team to do this, and just having some of the best guys, it's like a great experience. And then obviously John Hackleman, so all those guys I owe all my future success to, so it's just, just them really. Hey Amen. Well, I think that's going to be it from us over here. We are going to be signing out over here. I got a new filming location over here at the KCPR studio over in San Luis Obispo for this one. Michael Hernandez of MLH Media. And we are going to be signing out for the 10 second mark with Alexander Xander Ines. Alrighty, brother. Sweet. Good job.